How many times would you start over? How many times would you be able to rebuild something you've spent years on only to have it demolished in front of you? How many cycles of build, destroy, build, destroy could you endure? And what if each cycle of destruction is carried out in a completely different way? Would you overcome each wave and maintain hope or give up? The life of a grower coming up through the 90s and early 2000s was absolutely no walk in the park. More like a walk that never ends. A walk where you could lose your life or your freedom. A walk that many give up on and few make it to the end unscathed. Welcome to High Design, my name is LMC. In this documentary, we are going to explore the turbulent yet inspiring story of Lance and his journey in building the Kraft Farmer brand. This is a story of perseverance, struggle, and passion. Make sure to hit the like button, share, subscribe, and strap in because this story is absolutely crazy. parents relocated to Mendocino in the early 70s. At that time, they had this vision of living off the land. There was kind of like this era of people wanting just a simpler life, getting away from the hustle and the bustle. They cut small redwood trees down by themselves without power tools and built this tiny little log cabin that my brother and I were born in. We were both born by candlelight in this, in this cabin without any running water or power and we lived like that for most of our childhood. Me and my brother grew up in the most amazing place in the world, I feel like. Like, we don't realize it, but we don't need anything. We don't need toys. You have the woods in your imagination. That is, that is all you need. And so I contribute my life and my mind and the fantasizing and all of that stuff to my childhood. I remember the very first time I sold something weed related. I remember there was a, a kid named Junior in my middle school and he was talking about weed and he showed me a picture, you know, of like a, of a five fingered leaf. And he's like, you know, this is weed. And like, you know, I'm trying to get some of this. And I was like, I've seen these plants before. Like I've got them in my backyard. And I remember when I was in the sixth grade, I snuck down there, I'll never forget it. I snuck down to my dad's garden in the morning. I remember snapping off one big five finger leaf plant. I put it in an RL Stein book that I had and I brought it to middle school and sold that leaf. And that was my very first time I sold anything cannabis. My high school had a graduating class of 45 people, I think. 20 of those kids I graduated pre-kindergarten with. Off-roading and trucks and wheeling, it was my fucking life from 15 to 18. I didn't drink alcohol, I didn't drink beer, I didn't smoke weed, but I wasn't square. Like, I, from a very young age, I know I wanted to make money and have some money, and my parents had split when I was really young. My mom was in Arizona. I basically packed all my stuff, picked up, and left for Arizona. Arizona was really where like shit started getting cracking for me. I was working at a, a welding shop. There was no minimum wage at the time, so I was getting paid like $5 an hour. My paychecks were like $225, I'll never forget. And I remember looking at that paycheck at 18 years old and thinking to myself like, how the fuck am I ever gonna make it in the world? Like, this is crazy. And you know, you start hanging out with the people that you that you work with. There was a guy named Mikey, and Mikey ran the press break. You know, and Mike Mikey was really like the friendly one. He's like, hey man, you're new. Where are you from? What's your situation? Hey, do you want to come over to my house at lunch? You know, and come to find out, you know, Mikey burned nonstop. Like he's showing me all the places to burn while he's on the job. He's like, everyone here smokes in the bathroom. I'm like, what? We burn in the bathroom, we get high, we put our fucking face mask shields on, we go back to welding, you go can smoke here in the, the yard behind the shop and I'm just like this is crazy like I'm I'm not doing this you know probably like a month in you know Mikey's just telling me how like our job sucks and it's not fun and it's just like back-breaking labor and like we just makes this whole thing fucking fun and when you start smoking and we're high at work like it's fun and it just makes everything better and I mean cannabis does it makes every single situation you know better um, there's a there's a right time to use it and, and, a, and a time not to but at that time like I'm, I'm just kind of following the lead I mean one thing led to another you know one minute 
you know, I'm smoking for the first time and then, and we're smoking ragweed, like shit you're breaking up, you know, with your fingers and stems and seeds and we're still getting ripped, you know, we're taking bong rips and smoking out of our pipe and smoking joints and like life's good. We're smiling and having fun and laughing and like it just opened me up to a, a totally different type of people and world and and I just started listening to, you know, like a lot of reggae music and smoking a lot of weed and and then, you know, started selling weed. My mom didn't know about it, so we'd have to get up every morning like we're going to work, she'd go to work. Me and my friend Warren would be back at the house playing foosball, selling weed out of her house. And I just knew that, you know, this wasn't gonna pan out for me. Like there's no money in Arizona. Everybody's broke down here and, and smoking dirt weed and that just wasn't gonna work out. I needed to do something else. Kind of like right at that time, you know, things started clicking where I was realizing like, man, you know, there's people around me that like I can get some shit from and I can bring shit down here and make some real money, you know, and that kind of led into, you know, moving home and, and started setting up a few uh, transportation situations that like brought me into the next point in my life. Mendo, Humble, Trinity, it wasn't like what everyone's come to know today that they see on IG with like these big gardens and big canopies and it wasn't like that. You had to hide under the canopy or, or, or hide plants up in trees, like seriously hide plants in trees. Back then, like dude, these dudes who grew weed were fucking animals. You know, these guys are fucking in full camo attire, faces painted, getting dropped off like on the side of a hillside. There was a reason why that flower was 4,500 and 5,000 a pound for outdoor. There's only a few locations you could grow it and the insane fucking risk and challenges and work that these people did. I remember, you know, people were really into Keef back then because it was like another form of hash. And I'm learning to make it and like this man blessed me with like two fucking 55 gallon trash bags of like trim and littles. He's like, here Lance, you can have this. And so I got these bags and I ordered a uh, screen printing screen on eBay and I must have made 2,500 to 5,000 one gram bags of Keef. I'm just going through for like three days straight, just making Keef nonstop and filling like these fucking dime bags till I had a duffel bag. I called the homies in Arizona and I'm like, yo, I'm getting on the road tomorrow. I'll be there in 16 hours. Whistle for the boys, like get everyone ready. I'm coming with the best shit that nobody's seen down there and everybody can afford it. Everybody's gonna be able to get a piece of this. This shit's gotta move, so I'm gonna bless all the homies at like 10, $15 a gram and then let them flip it. So I'm driving down there and I got my fucking headphones on listening to Cottonmouth Kings, just like, fuck yeah. Like I've got this duffel bag taking up the whole side of the, the bench seat. It's hot out, it's deserty. I'm fucking doing like 70. Just thinking to myself like, I'm gonna cash the fuck out. Can't hear shit cause I'm just fucking blaring Cottonmouth Kings. And I look down and I see my speed going down. I'm like, what the fuck? And like, I'm seeing all this smoke barreling from the rear view mirror, gray smoke. Pull the headphones out, hear a, a horrible sound, downshift, boom. That motherfucker's toast. So it just like comes rolling to a fucking stop. And like I get out and I look underneath it and the whole fucking transmission's cracked in half, just fucking guts all down the freeway. And I'm like, oh shit. And I got this duffel bag. I'm only like 15 minutes from Needles. Passing through Needles, crossing the Arizona state border and entering Arizona. It was the most dangerous place to drive on the West Coast. And I'm like, all right, you know, it's just, you're going to see your mom, you know, you're on your way to press, get everything's fucking good. I got all my shit rehearsed. I know what's going on. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not all fucking high. I'm not smoking. I grab one of the phones that they got on the side of the freeway. I pick it up. I'm like, I've got a blown vehicle here. Yada, 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 the tow truck's getting it. I start walking into town with the duffel pack on my back. I get into needles, I go to the liquor store, use the pay phone, I call my two homies at the time, and I'm like, yo, I'm in fucking needles. Come get me now. This was 2002. As I'm sitting there, I got my fucking duffel bag here. I'm just sitting. The CHP officer like just pulls right up to the liquor store where he gets out of his car. He comes walking up and he looks down at me and he's like, hey man, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, my truck broke down up the road, going to see my mom in Arizona. You know, she's on her way to pick me up. And he was like, okay, right on, you know, glad to see you got it covered. And he goes into that 
the fucking liquor store and leaves. I didn't even bring a t-shirt with me. Little did he know that fucking duffel bag was loaded up to the gills. And the boys rolled up and I grabbed the duffel bag and we jumped in his fucking lowered 1992 Honda Accord four-doored and stepped on the gas and headed right for fucking Prescott.